Hello. Hello. Oh. Oof. Yeah, it should. Let me check. Um, give me a sec. Oh yeah, it does. Um, any explanation on, I talked about the cell by, which cell would that be? I'm not really. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, I have an, my eye on it. And, uh, I'm pretty sure the radar actually just went down for that site. Um, I haven't confirmed that yet, but, um, that cell, um, Although the radar is showing some contamination, I would say that the cell um, definitely it might have, I cannot confirm this, it might have rotation. I cannot confirm this because the, uh, because the area is very, but, um, yeah, it's not, I'm trying to think of, think of the word. I'll share what I have. All right, so let me just get it into view. So obviously, this is a jumbled mess right here. Now, this is like five behind. I think there is down, so we're going to have to ditch that right here for now. But this is a jumbled mess of what looks to be contamination. And within that contamination, there could be rotation because um, on a different radar, you could see that there was um, rotation. Uh, well, there was potential rotation as the storm became stronger. Uh, obviously, it this is still better early, and honestly, tornadoes are not coming at all. But the conditions today, there has made it possible for tornadoes to possibly form. Yes, however, I have been also keeping an eye on Twitter, um, just in case of any reports that come in, because um, I can do that. Um, but I've seen some damage reports that um, I'm pretty sure that, I don't know, I don't really think that wind can uproot some roots from a tree. Um, and so I just saw some damage that was very interesting. I'm going to put it in the live discussion. Um, or actually, no, the live map the room. This is some damage I just saw on Twitter um, from uh, from these storms.
So, tornadoes are not the only threat today. There's obviously wind and tornado. Um, Um, me? Nice. Now obviously, now obviously this was, it looked like this was um, 25 minutes ago, but it looked like there was a hook that was on one of the storms. Yeah, I found it. There was one hook over... Wadensee? Is it? It's near Amsterdam. This, this one, the Wadensee. Uh, we were, we were talking about this off stream that it can be something dangerous because it looked like this and now it looks like this it has a really strong hook echo and before it looked like this so it is showing off some sort of a hook for at least more than 20 minutes this can be dangerous, and uh, some radars uh, show a strong mesocyclone over there in these cells. Now I'm pretty sure that that I'm pretty sure that that cell button now has I'm pretty sure that that cell button now 
has merged with the cell that was by Alkmaar in the Netherlands, and I'm pretty sure that as a, as a result, this um, has been producing what I've seen a possibly nasty supercell. Yeah, um, I'm going to be taking a look as well on uh, the operators, because I know through those operators, um, it was showing that some of the... I'm going to stop sharing for a little bit. Hello? Um, yeah, definite. That could definitely be a cause of it. Um, I'm, like I said before, I'm taking a look at, uh, some cells that have that are currently they're not in by the Netherlands area, but I believe these cells are night. I believe these cells are in Switzerland, if I'm correct. Um, heading towards Germany, and um, there's a cell, a hail core right now that um looks very interesting. Um, Yes, uh, I think my microphone does work again now. I managed to change my settings a bit and it changed the pause so I won't have any more trouble with the cell right now. It should fix my microphone issues. It's uh, not easy having the weather over you yourself. Makes the connection uh, worse. Yeah, you can really see on this uh, loop how the cells first spring up and then, yeah, this allowed and then new cells start to form slowly from the south. And even if you don't see lightning activity anymore or high precipitation rates on radar, doesn't mean it right now isn't going to be bad because there is still a very high possibility that it could change in an instant and you could get rain that you don't want to imagine. You could have flash flooding in from one minute to another. That's how fast uh, where it can change in these types of situations. But I want to know more on this uh, the situation right now in the higher uh, levels. Um, let me get my chrome capture again. Yes. Oh wait. That's um window capture. Um I'm currently I have a question really quick. Yeah. Um so is the is Windhoos another term for tornado in Netherlands? Uh, wind um, host is a term here, yes. Overall wind. Okay, um, because I did just get a, what looks to be possibly a picture. Um, I'm not sure if this is new or not, but it's... Um, um, I'm just wanting to note, the visibility is almost near zero now because of the rain in my area. Um... Let's see. I, by the way, guys, sorry if the audio didn't work. I'm under a severe thunderstorm right now. I'm having some uh, connection issues. 
Um, let me get my like this, I'd say. this display um, let me change to now right there so in my area if I'm getting the radar from this one um, let's see if it does load yes it does here I'm gonna zoom in on my area. Right there. Now I have to wait for the resolution to load. Here it is. There it is. Red speckles here. These red ones. That's uh, precipitation rates of 37 to possibly 65 millimeters an hour. That's about 3.5 to 6.5 centimeters an hour. So. What I'm also finding interesting to note about this uh, system is that it's trying to develop what looks like a classic supercell shape which is more of this elongated sheared look which uh, means clouds are basically blown away the tops and right here is where the mesocyclone should form if it was the case in my case it's starting to clear up now and I'm waiting for the next round. Um, in the southern half, you can see new cells starting to uh, fire up. These, if they move north fast enough, they can also become big and maybe one can if it gets strong enough. Uh, There it is. This is to run from 12 UTC. And uh, this was our main guidance, which led to the issuing of an elevated risk. Shows very dangerous cells for later to the for later in the night, uh, yeah, early night, the northern half of the country especially but also the northwestern half, so we are not done yet, this is only round one. Like, these cells are now passed. Then night should clear up indeed. Then in a um, few I'm, days. I'm looking at a cell that has potential, to, that looks like it might be blowing up. Um, yes. The uh, still question is by all right. Well, it's radar, and this one over button symbol died off. I think it's by Arnhem. I cannot tell or Apple oh, Apple Dorn. Apple Dorn. Uh, yeah. Apple Dorn, yeah. Yeah, that's over I think. Yeah, it's over Yeah. That area had some uh, soundings, which is basically a vertical cross section of the atmosphere, and that uh, showed pretty high Cape values. Cape means how much energy is there available in the atmosphere to become uh, basically uh, thunderstorms, so to say. And as well, we can uh, we have I've noticed that the northeastern part. Of the Netherlands, where we are expecting some of the heaviest cells after this round is over, at uh, yeah, shared a lot of energy in the area and also the southwestern and western half. Not sure about how it's now, but when I'm looking outside, I can still see new cells trying to blow up basically. So, Jacob, what are you doing? I'm trying to find something 
flow complete parameter is high, we expected. Uh, we based our forecast for today on everything that we got. We looked for, for every model available and we looked for low level shear, which is basically a chance for a tornado to occur. The, the easiest way you can explain it. And yeah, tornado per low level shear is basically what uh, the differences in wind speeds are on the lower levels of the atmosphere, like zero to three kilometers in height, for example. That's the lower levels. Yeah. Um, Yes, tomorrow we will have something similar tomorrow in France. I think there's, there will be a lot of uh, very good conditions to form thunderstorms again. Yeah, so I found um, for this. There, this is from KNOI, it's one of the forecasts. And it, uh, it says more than 2,000 joules per kilogram of Cape this afternoon in an area of six, 0 to 6 kilometers is 30 to 40 knots of shear, basically in that area. And the northern half of the country locally we got shear of 40 to 50 knots. So, Juxinator, could you maybe explain what this means? for the weather um, event. So, are you referring to, let me just catch up really quick. Um, so you're referring to the shear? Um, yes, the wind and shear and the cape. So the cape values for Europe, um, who spark a tornado, they are the United States. The, there does not need to be as much shear, nor, there's, no, there, nor does there need to be um, as much cape. And in this case, for Europe, the Cape is higher um, than normal, and as a result, because only thousand of Cape would be needed for just a tornado in Europe, well, compared to the United States, it would need to be above like 2,000 or something like that. And this could cause um, potentially um, an outbreak, and actually, I think I'm starting to see some rotation on the cell. Um, Heading towards, uh, it's not Amersport, um, let me get the, it's heading towards well with that, I'm pretty sure, in Dronton. Dronton, that's so, uh, yeah. let's see, if I can get some, r look at the radar real quick. Oh yeah, let me put my radar, let me see my radar again real quick. Um, I'm getting the cane on my radar real quick. This is what I'm seeing. Yes. Um, I'll be Alright, yeah, I'm seeing it too on the radar. Let me get to your screen real quick. I'll be it's a bit contaminated but um you can mm -hmm. see two you can see two hail cores right there, um and you can also see rotation. Um, and if I check the other radar, um, the this cell right here, um, that'd be this cell right here. Again, contaminated mm -hmm. radar, but it's showing. Oh, and speaking of contamination, while this is contaminated, it is clearly showing some rotation. Um, it. Albeit, it does look like it's trying to have a hook echo forming as well. Can you confirm uh, thankfully, that? Thankfully, it's mostly over water. Um, but let's see, it is heading. It's not really heading towards land. It's heading more towards the islands up here. Oh, that's Urk, uh, which is headed to, which is also pretty hefty populated. Well, then that's not good. <laughs> 
Yeah, almost the entire country is uh, heavily populated. Urk and Flevoland are provinces that once were basically ocean. And now they're cities for the most part. Ah. Uh, that's not good. Yeah. They have seen a lot of those before, so they are prepared and they got protection of the Isomere, which should uh, hopefully turn the cell to the west. Uh, let's see. And that's so uh, over North Holland, which you see to the northwestern part of this uh, cell we're watching near Urk. Like, what do we think of that uh, cluster? It's it's not looking like it looks like it can get bad um, pretty fast. No. Yeah, you keep it on these things. Mm hmm. Let's see. So. We've got someone noting out that in the northeastern half of the Netherlands there is indeed a cell also uh, really blowing up now and I think that's, uh, that's the cell below our cell near Urk. So that's the one that's less reflectivity under it right there. Um, let me show you my radar real quick and shoot window capture. There it is, and then here. It's this cell that you see to the south of the one we're watching right there. Let me refresh the radar. This area right here shows a potentially dangerous cell. Um, let me get satellite image. This should show the event uh, over the past six hours. Here you can really see how fast now the northeastern half of the country is uh, blowing up. You can uh, I'll just get a steal real quick. Oh, here's the steal. This is also a bit more up to date. Here, this cell I'm encircling right there. Those two are my main concern. One is heading for the city of Groningen, which is one of the biggest cities in the entire country. And the other one is heading for Drenthe, which is in, in the direction of Asse, it looks like, which is in that same province in the northeastern half of the Netherlands. And this can potentially get very dangerous if it does undergo some sort of transitioning into a supercell and if it would drop a tornado we'd have a worst case scenario basically. At least if it's above EF1. But we're not expecting above that luckily. But we can't rule it out sadly. There are soundings which show the possibility of an EF3 at most in the country. So, let me get an idea of the warnings right here in the Netherlands right now. So, KNMI has issued a code orange for almost the entire country now. It's lifted in multiple areas now into yellow. This is my province for example. I uh, need to load it first so that I can get a good overview here. The cells we're watching are in this orange area. This is where the most dangerous uh, cells can occur, and the uh, yeah here, code orange is in effect for severe thunderstorms in the northern half of the country. At this time, there's a chance of heavy wind gusts. That's 100 to 120 kilometers an hour. Hailstones of two to four centimeters. That could shatter wind shields if it. Uh, to hit in the right place and for the rest of the area we got code yellow in effect which means you should be on high alert but you shouldn't be as cautious as a code orange and yeah when I'm looking at 
There's another forecasting method of us. Let me get a plume real quick. Here we can uh, here we can see the Cape values of today. It's peaking at 1247 shots per kilogram, which is more than 10 times the amount needed for a minimal thunderstorm in the country. Okay, you have to go no. right now. All right. So one more thing. Yes. And this very humid and unstable air mass will go over Central Europe, like Germany, Poland, and some other areas like Ukraine, Belarus, and the uh, Balkans. So there next week we will be featuring maybe something about this area. Yeah. Yeah, and France uh, yeah, is also right looking. Now I spotted 3000 Cape over Poland and Germany, so in good fuel conditions. Here, if I get a model run. And go, uh, I think the newest. And model run in hours, I think. There is a risk for, a very big risk for France and once again for the Netherlands in the coming days it looks like this weekend and France might see a potentially dangerous supercell by the uh, weather model here this is a very bad sign if it shows this already the current event had only one of these but way smaller and less uh, well defined and then basically after that we get the extratropical remnants of uh, Tropical Storm Bale, which is also likely co to cause uh, a second round of severe weather in Europe and then keeps it unstable for the next entire week. So, yeah, and I found, uh, I found this uh, run it's in 108 hours from now. Yeah, so, I'm g so like this. So, if we are going to take a look at the current situation. Yeah. More than 1,000 cape stays overnight. It's like yeah. 5 a.m. and the cape says, "Yeah, let's go to." Yeah, here you can really see what's called warmer attraction. Scares me, and I think 24/7 thunderstorms. Maybe. Yeah. All right. So we are seeing on this model run that the low pressure area is situated to the west of Ireland and almost over UK, and also the pressure system is of the west coast of France. This is a thermal low. And also one thermal low which is originating from an occluding extratropical cyclone over the Black Sea. Together with a very strong high pressure area forming over Eastern Europe, we get warm air being pushed up from the south of Africa, also called Spanish plume this. And it's almost even a Sahara plume in this area. And this basically uh, causes upper air temperatures of 16 degrees Celsius in large parts of Europe. Which means that over 30 degrees Celsius widespread in northwestern Western Europe. And then if you look just a bit more west you can see 4 degrees Celsius just over UK. And that's a massive difference in temperatures at higher air levels. Which at the mid levels basically one and a half kilometers in the sky and this creates instability and along with a possible frontal passage we are likely to see more of this event in the coming hours for especially the northern half of the country as now the western half is putting clear um, so if we look at the model runs will this weather continue or will it not so what we see here is that once the extra tropical cyclone which originated from tropical storm Beul is nearing Iberia we can see it pushes another even stronger advection of warm air up towards your towards Scandinavia and might even trigger another round of severe weather um, so if we're going to look in a more long range we can see it moves out and cooler air comes into place this is uh, 
what we got right now as well. Then later on in long range we are seeing it tries to get up again and could get even warmer than we are seeing at the moment. Then if we are looking at the geopotential height which is basically showing low pressure, high pressure, red is higher pressure, blue is lower pressure. So what we're seeing here is an airflow from a trough in a low level jet that goes from it stretches all the way from Nova Scotia, dives into Iberia, is then forced up again besides the Netherlands right over the coast. And this basically forces a lot of wind shear on the lower levels and also the more higher levels. Which means that Severe thunderstorms will have a much easier time springing up. So, um, let's see if it loads. Yes, for tomorrow and the day after, we can see that France is at a potentially high risk for severe thunderstorms or even worse. Supercells could also be possible. After that, the low pressure area moves through the Benelux in Germany and then possibly triggers more severe weather in Eastern Europe. Now we're going to take a look at also a good performing model SCHEM. It's the Canadian weather model. The run should be just coming in. Yes it is. And it also shows the situation only possibly getting worse for France and the Benelux as shear is going to increase and possibly Cape again going to increase. You can also see the differences in between runs right here. So I won't be going past this but it should. if I show Cape right here then you can see how especially in France and Germany the model had a lot of instability even going off the scale in some places and the Netherlands barely has any in the run which is kind of inaccurate for now but this is likely to do with the uh, model's uh, feedback options after this the risk moves towards Eastern Europe where we could also see a potential tornado risk emerge um, let's see precipitation so the weather model, what does it show for the rest, the remainder of the day? We are going to be putting clear right here and then the danger moves to possibly Norway and Sweden or we also might be seeing some severe thunderstorms as they speed off north towards the North Pole then turn into an extra tropical cyclone and go away also this model picks up on a very strong uh, potential uh, system, convective system over France. A mesoscale convective system is not ruled out entirely. And GFS, also a good performing model. This shows also how this trough gets forced to dive and then speed up north again and this causes even more instability and for the people who are wanting some relief from the heat well that relief might be short as this extratropical cyclone moves in but then it moves out again and high pressure looks to be succeeding this time in conquering all of Europe and it goes really fast now and then it can get very warm very easily it would also suppress severe weather unless this low pressure system does indeed decide to uh, stay there and then expand and then cause a new trough to go but this would also have the consequences of even warmer air for most of Europe um, let's see, do we have more? so furthermore we're going to be looking at some new radar imagery for the Netherlands. Here you can see the cell near Urk is weakening and the cells over 
northern half are now weakening too but I wouldn't be surprised if we get some new ones and looking outside I'm having some beautiful cloud formations so once the danger is basically over for the most part you can go outside and look at the clouds they are very photogenic at the moment and you won't see this often anymore I'll be taking some pictures right now even or share one uh, let me get a good look all right so let's get this on the stream in a minute first let's see if the risk has moved again no the risk yes the risk has moved a bit to the northeast now And let's see. Um, let's change my screen again to Discord. Window capture at source. There it is. So basically, we got two more photos sent in from the public server from Gigsby. So those that are those two. This image shows a beautiful, almost supercell-like or even supercell formation looking from Flavorland, if I remembered it right. And, and you can also see another look of the system. And yeah, it's a beautiful shot. It really shows how dangerous the weather is at the moment. And you can also look very far away. This cell is likely 20 or 30 kilometers away from the location of this photo so I took this myself just now out of the window and this shows basically how strong the updrafts that are those upward air currents in the atmosphere that basically generate those and feed those thunderstorms and they those generate amazing cloud structures like this this, this shows definite r rotation between the uh, heights in the atmosphere as well which is also beautiful like this picture sh is likely going to be featured as photo of the week maybe on Sunday I think it will be featured maybe even today on Twitter if we get permission of of course the one who shot the picture um, so let's get back to the model runs and see what is coming for us the next day or so, or so for France. So let's go back to the site. Um, let's go to Rome. This is the French weather model, um, like this. And then, um, yes. All right. So let's see what happens in the next hours. This weather model also has. Uh, Potentially very dangerous cells in northeast and half of the Netherlands forming. But let's get back to the danger in France. So it doesn't look like it's going to last long anymore. Yeah, France is in the late e late afternoon to beginning of the evening. A lot of uh, possible supercells spring up in France and then track north into the Benelux again. And form another low pressure area then speed off again as a new system once again forms and then moves towards Switzerland so let's get simulated infrared which is basically uh, satellite pictures but it's simulated here this shows the event unfolding in the Netherlands with but th th this is discrete this is called discrete which means the cells are moving parallel to each other don't interact and yeah, you can really see a multi-cell in the northwestern half, that's this one, and the rest, this is a possible supercell, which we're currently tracking. It's this one. That's this cell. They're definitely blowing up again as they're entering now, the, still on that potential in the northeastern half of the country. And let me get some satellite imagery again. 
I should show the supercell, possibly. Here it is. There, this is a prime and classic example of how fast a thunderstorm can grow given the right conditions. This uh, small thunderstorm, well, not small anymore, it's almost as big as an entire province. Well, this only an hour ago or something, this was barely visible on satellite imagery. Now it's one of the biggest cells we are seeing. And it's likely to still grow and uh, become stronger again. Um, let's get back to the model and see. Here you can also see it very well. Uh, here, below here. Boom. It merges with this system and becomes a cluster. So a cluster basically means that there are a lot of uh, Oh, I say thunderstorms in one small area or one large area together forming one system. They're acting as one big thunderstorm. So for France, we are seeing for tomorrow, there you can see it really well. Very big thunderstorms. Possible supercells as well, and they form a low pressure area later on because of it. And they move over straight over the Netherlands which can be seen right here you can see it's almost as big as the entire country entire Benelux even which is quite big but some extratropical cyclones or thermalos can get larger then later on we have a risk for Switzerland satellite so imagery so this is the current satellite view of Europe. You can see the cell that was once a Dronte cell right here. You can see the system that moved over me here in the northern half of the country. As well as Spain right now also having some very big thunderstorms which we can't cover right now because of a lack of radar resources we, should, we could use. So let's see what Twitter has to send in for us. Um, oh wait a minute, wait a minute, I see a new trending hashtag. Oh, not this one. No, here it is. The newest. So, we're likely seeing some reports coming in zone of uh, dangerous weather um, let's see here this is in uh, nor I think the eastern half of the Netherlands maybe the northwestern half not sure in this place this shows how the rain is really pouring outside the camera it's not really visible but I'd say the visibility would be low in this area with potential for flash flooding in nearby vicinity. There this was in the region of Deventer we've seen some very strong cells springing up as well and yeah we're slowly uh, putting clear as well now as the last cells start to move east north eastward and will likely weaken as the night falls. So for the coming days we're expecting another risk in France and then in the next coming week we're expecting a risk for Eastern Europe and we're also keeping eyes out on the Mediterranean for possible for possible development of a Medicaid if, if it comes to forming because the synoptic situation would, based atmospheric situation would allow it if the pattern breaks right now. But that would take a it would take a while. So for now we have to keep an eye on the weather, stay safe and follow official forecasts closely as they know their job well, they they got all the knowledge and information you need. If you have any inquiries you can reach out to us via at for certain Europe on Twitter or subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also 
Um, yes. You can also follow us on Discord via the Force 13 Discord server, which is force13.gg. And the community is friendly and there is a lot of information as well about the current weather event as we are continuing to cover it. So let's see if we get some more information now from the radar. Yes. So these cells are definitely getting strength right now and are becoming more discreet once again. Which is a bad sign for things to come as well because I hope those cells were starting to weaken now and would fizzle out but nope those cells are picking definitely into the potential and I wouldn't be surprised if we got some uh, reports of a possible tornado in either Friesland or Groningen. As the instability is there, the greatest and even model soundings from uh, weather models showed potential severe weather in there. So we just got a report as well from a uh, possible tornado in uh, Spain, Astorga, Spain. I hope I pronounced it correctly, I likely didn't, there it is, let's see if the article loads, so, um, does it load, yes I know, there you can see another picture of it, I hope, let's see if it loads, yes it does, So it's possibly in, in, I'll use my Google Translate function. And there it is, there's a video of it. This uh, is a possible drill bit type tornado, which is the most violent type. But this one seems pretty calm in comparison to most, but don't let it fool you, here it is again. This makes it uh, so dangerous. You can see the tornado has moved to the east through the suburbs as well. And here you can see it picks up debris as well. This shows how dangerous the conditions in the atmosphere are at the moment. And I wouldn't be surprised if we get a report of another tornado in Spain later today. Or even a report of tornadoes within the Benelux, or as especially the Netherlands, as the risk is uh, is the largest at the current time. At the moment, it's 19:24 Central European Standard Time, which would mean that usually the instability would now decrease. But in the areas northeastern half of the country, it's only going to increase at the moment. And once it peaks, those cells are moving right over it and can tap all the potential. This would make them uh, basically explode and become even stronger cells. Let's get a new satellite image. Here you can really see how these the cells are basically um, at their putting all of the energy in the surrounding area of the atmosphere towards them and they are using it into their advantage so they can sustain longer, they can get stronger have your precipitation as well and maybe this one uh, who knows if it drops tornado or not, we've got a convergence line right over here over this entire area which means that basically all air is uh, drawn towards it and forced into a rising motion. This rising motion is what supports the development of these thunderstorms along with the instability in the area. Um, let's see. Let's see if we get an update from the radar right here. This should show us 
Yes, so this cell right here, which I'm looking at on satellite as well, is possibly developing a hill core right now. Extremely heavy rain. And it's on a course due north northeast, it looks like. And the cells which first looked to be producing a hook echo now are weakening and dissolving. My area is now finally getting uh, clear, but maybe locally some new cells springing up in the distance, but I don't expect much. Um, furthermore, let's see if we got some in Germany as well. Yeah, this is definitely trying to become a developing uh, supercell. Here in Germany, we got some strong hill cores like this one. Is Within these hill of two centimeters is even possible. I wouldn't uh, rule them out. Northern half of Germany, more towards the Netherlands as well. You can also see some uh, strong cells with uh, hail and such. And please, if you're in the area of such one, stay indoors. Don't venture outside. If you do, be careful. Avoid trees in open places. Avoid open water. This is so you can get minimal risk of getting struck by lightning or getting hit by large hail. Um, Here's a current radar look with lightning activity. This shows how radar our lightning activity definitely has gone an increase as it's now heading north. This is basically non-stop lightning right now and if you live in those areas where temperatures are still very high, my area is still 20 degrees Celsius as well. So it's not really cold again. But in northern half it's still 23, 22 degrees Celsius, so those cells are definitely heading into some favorable conditions still. And will only be gaining strength as they head through, head through the provinces of the northern half of the country. It looks like also Friesland is going to get uh, the worst of it. Uh, rain is moving all the way. Yeah, there's a cell moving northwest and a cell moving east. It's a classic situation for the area, which means that all the rain gets pulled towards the same area because of the huge lake in the middle of the country. So, you're watching First 13 Europe live as we're covering severe weather in the Benelux and also getting some reports from Spain and elsewhere. So let's take a look at the weather charts. Um, right there. Here you can see what's causing all this instability. It's this uh, thermal low right here I'm encircling. Or this convergence zone. This moves over the country along with this warm front. Which also moved over. And basically this frontal boundary as well. is. Which is basically this, uh, yeah, I always say it, it's basically a boundary of different types of air. And this forces basically the convection to only increase in strength and possibly even enhance the rising motion in the atmosphere. So, let's take a look at the Annette prognosis for Saturday Zero C. It's likely to develop into an extra tropical cyclone by then, fully frontal. By 12C, it's going to speed off north, and a new extra tropical cyclone develops from a thermal low over France and a new warm sector, which is the area behind a warm front, gets uh, gets generated sort of, and this causes more instability and uh, again possibly even a very high risk of tornadoes in France. So keep a close eye on this one. Here we can see Extratropical Storm Bill right now. This was uh, named by the National Hurricane Center when it was a tropical cyclone, tropical storm even. And you can see what is basically the boundary of the polar front, which is basically a front that you can't see, but it's noticeable on weather maps. And this is colder air than elsewhere in the higher air layers. And, it's for, and this is trying to force its way down and dependent on its timing we will see 
stronger or less strong severe weather. Most events are known to have taken place when the polar front came in and departed very quickly and then came in again. With most famous examples being 1967, 2009, 2013 and even 2019 saw this event occur. I can't call any more out of my head at the moment but those are coming to my head. So if we look at the archives right now we can see for today zero Z. This is what uh, it looked like in the morning. It was clear at the time and the first cells were springing up. Next up these convergence lines basically dissipated and a thermal low started to situate over the western half of France. Trust seed started to move north and is now very now situated over the Netherlands right there. So then we go to now. That looks like this. Still the same situation but we're likely to see some more severe weather in the northern half very soon. Um, let's see. So we've also marked this uh, Black Sea area also first as potential area of uh, subtropical development. So we noticed that it decided to uh, lose its thermal characteristics and turn non-tropical again. So the next weather outlook from for certain Europe will drop all the chances for the system as it's now expected to stay frontal. Now next up we can look at Sweden where also a convergence line is indeed in the area. Well this convergence line could also trigger this severe weather to track north, northeast and also cause some disruption possible flooding right there. Um, let's see if there is any update on the warnings. Yes it has, it's moved once again more to the northeast and I'm still on the code yellow right now so I have to be less careful to starting to clear up again. It was pretty scary right today and let's see if we get some observations today. So we have 32 degrees Celsius observed in the southern half of the country right there and we have wind speeds that were observed in meters per second right there high observations in the northern half of the country especially under those uh, cells here you can see really well this is an area of one of the strongest cells we're looking at 77 km an hour wind gusts were measured that's less than forecasted but it could also be possibly stronger for the more we can see the visibility decre is decreasing a lot in the northwest with 2600 to 3400 meters in the northern half, northwestern half, which is extremely low sight. This means the rain would be almost blinding to your view. And the relative humidity is now very dry in the southern half of the country and it's still very humid in the north, even up to 90-98%. This should help elevate the cells to get a better intensity again and then basically yeah as they gain strength they move into the province and yeah let's see what the radar shows okay so good news is the cells do seem to be uh, try falling apart a bit which would be great to hear because I don't want a possible risk for the northern half of the country yeah, it's mostly going into the lake again, which is looks like it's forming a maybe a possible small bow echo, which could bring heavy rain, precipitation, possibly large hail as well. Uh, furthermore, let's check lightning activity. Right, lightning activity. So lightning activity that's being showed is definitely picking up. As it's moving north, northeast over the country, and is yeah, if you live in 
this part North Holland or if you live in Friesland, Groningen, Drenthe, please stay inside. These thunderstorms have the risk of large hail of 2 to 4 cm, heavy rain or possible flash flooding, maybe very locally a tornado and as well as heavy wind gusts of at least 70 km an hour to even 120 km an hour or higher at points. Um, if you live in the area of Utrecht and also still inside Holland, you should still keep an eye out on the weather as there are still some small thunderstorms and going with very high lightning activity. This could still pose a danger to life and yeah, they are not the biggest and longest lasting but if they do manage to gain strength and you get caught by surprise, you don't want to be in one of them. They have the potential to cause also they also cause flash flooding. Um, let's see if we can find some more on the weather models. Let's check Arpege. It's the French weather model. Another one. New Cape. This is the most unstable Cape, basically. Yeah, here it shows that uh, for the uh, here for the Netherlands. Um, let's get a good look. Here it is. It's one of the most on point ones with 1,500 joules per kilogram. That's around my area of Cape, which is very high instability and it's also likely to cause uh, more severe weather. Also note that northern Germany into Denmark also see some very high cape which could pose some threat in terms of severe weather for there. If a severe thunderstorm does spring up and it manages to get all of the energy out of this area it would likely head into Denmark and also cause dangerous weather conditions as it continues to move. So furthermore we need to look at if we are seeing some more dangers of potential supercells in the night hours. So let's get back to our homo new weather model for this. Let's see what it catches up to. Here it does still, it's still on the old run but it this does show some strong uh, cells in the overnight hours soon. This is 2100. Where is it? Uh, come on. Let's see if it loads now. There. Overnight we can still see uh, some locally some strong cells, but they are continuing to move north, northeast. And then from the south again new cells are forming and move over the Netherlands. This is possibly it's possible this changes from a bow echo to a discrete mode again because of the instability in the area. So let's see if we got any more photos from the public server for us. Yes we do. Um, let's get them on the stream real quick. Right there, so let's change it to Discord. Here you can see some more, more of those incredible photos made by uh, Gibbs BNL. If I spelled it right, here you can see what's called a shelf cloud. That name itself is also, it's also called rolling cloud or roll cloud. Those are basically huge lines of the uh, forward flank or for, forward front basically, gust front of a, of a heavy thunderstorm most likely. Those only form a linear system, which me linear systems. This means that a system isn't likely to be capable of producing a tornado or even a wall cloud which is likely a precursor of one. Those bring very strong straight line winds over 100 kilometers an hour in most cases strong. Uh, yeah, the rainfall can be blinding as well in those. 
skies are usually very dark and cut clouds can be moving underneath it as well we got a panorama shot of it which really shows well how huge this line is this really stretches all the way in the horizon if you would view this incredible shot and really thanks again for sending in your pictures we appreciate it without it we're nowhere so let's see if we got any more updates on the radar now because the cells should now be moving more into more favorable areas um, oh. <laughs> the radar went down it looks like if it did that would be bad all right it's back up nice yeah we got this grid mode again in northern half of the country with but new cells do have trouble springing up so that's good news and i think we're going to round up the stream in about 10 to 20 minutes at most we hope you really enjoyed it and Really, if you have any suggestions or feedback, it is appreciated. If you've got any questions at the moment still, please tag us with at 413 Europe. And we will answer your question. Um, let's see. Oh. Let's see if we get some more information on the situation via another weather model. This is the British weather model, Yukmo from Met Office. This also shows a potentially dangerous situation unfolding for France tomorrow and then producing a possible blow echo as it passes over the Netherlands. I wouldn't rule out a tornado risk for France this time. This, this is potentially very dangerous as well. So let's check Econ right now, which is the German weather model from the Deutsche Wetterdienst then. Right there. So let's take a look. Uh, wait. Yes. Here we can really see it slowly moving into the country, the low pressure system, and the trough weakening. We see high pressure easily coming over to Greenland and Scandinavia again, and new low pressure system embedded right here. So let's check what it says for the jet stream, considering that's an option in this one. We do indeed have a weak jet stream factor at the moment. And this is likely what is uh, causing the entire event as well. Because of this, it creates even more wind shear, which is the. And this wind shear is especially what uh, is often lacking in Europe. So once it is indeed in the area and it is. Uh, uh, let's say yeah there's so much we uh, we can't really do anything with it so to say and yeah, then uh, you're looking at a potentially dangerous situation like again now with a particularly dangerous situation unfolding in the Benelux as we are covering the event so here Econ does show a cold front moving in before the system moves north or weakens and a new system forms to the west and this triggers some new warm air advection which is the rise of warm air uh, warm air upwards towards the poles that's called warm air advection let's check the euro 4 which is basically a sort of version from the ecm but then it's a mesoscale model let's see the model is less strong for the netherlands signals but for France, it's definitely getting dangerous in this model, but showing a very big, strong supercell right there. And the supercell, yeah, if it would have all the right conditions, it could get very dangerous in the area of Normandy. Dunkirk should keep an eye on this, since that's headed your way in the model. So let's see if we can get more. Where is it? No, not this one. Arom, there it is. So let's check the color simulated in infrared. No, color. There it is. So 
the color simulated infrared shows the cloud tops as well over Europe. And here you can really see what we call an overshooting top, possibly a supercell right over the northern border of the Netherlands. It's almost out of scale right here, you can really see that right here. This small top is almost out of scale. So much that it shows yellow instead of uh, white. That's on very high cloud tops, likely in excess of 14 kilometers in height, which comes close to supercell level or is even at supercell level. Here you can see really that the system has moves once again over the Benelux at peak intensity. Yeah, like the Benelux and France and Germany will then next week we need our eyes on Eastern Europe as the severe weather starts to shift from position. Now it's the main risk is for the Benelux, especially the Netherlands. You can really see the model run showing a strong supercell possibly forming in the northern half of the country. We'll have to see if that indeed does occur. Currently the cells are weakening, so that will be a good sign. Unless, yeah, this, those cells are indeed weakening and risk is decreasing. So I'm glad for this. Uh, yes, it is indeed weakening. Let's see if the public server has any more information for us to share. So, all right, so moving on, we are in the public server, we're indeed getting more tweets in about indeed this one and the same uh, possible tornado, that's Spain, it was at 1400 hours local time, that's this one, it really shows the tornado well, it's indeed what I'd call a drill bit possibly drop tornado that's that's certain it does look to strengthen yeah that's I'm not sure what the damage is yet but this tornado is definitely the risk of uh, being an EF2 or higher ah I thank you for your suggestion Meteo 79 we appreciate it so let's go to Harmony for France. And let's start to run in faster. Yes, that works perfect. Here you can really see how the cells of overall press animation and you can see it. This event today in the Netherlands was really scary with multiple possible supercells and even a possible tornado report as well. You can really see the bow echo forming in the Netherlands then weakening again over the northern half. Eastern half of France then having a possible squall line forming. This really is a potentially yeah United Kingdom also looks to have some uh, in these in the hours right now it does indeed have some activity I think well it had some activity it now died down yes it should die down now yeah okay yes the activity has died down it looks like in the United Kingdom so we don't have to cover that luckily because I don't know any radar sites for there so let's get back to the warnings it is. Let's see what happens. They haven't shifted the risk. It's still the same. It's likely because of all this lighting activity that's going on. Yes, it is. All right. So I want to thank everyone for watching the video. Don't don't forget to uh, follow our Twitter, which is at four thirteen Europe. Um, let me get Twitter real quick at force 13 Europe 
uh, Twitter, of course. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, which you should do. Here you see it. We're starting Europe. Let's get back. Oh, yeah. Don't mind to press uh, the subscribe button, so it'll show it right here. It's red button right here. You should um, right here. Click on it. Don't forget to click the bell and set on either personalized or every notification, so you'll keep up to date with our latest news and information as we are covering possible severe weather in Europe and we'll be releasing some video updates as well on and windstorms in the future. For Twitter you don't mind to click the follow button 